but you'll be able to hear it. So have a listen. God, these eight speeds are good. Hello and welcome to another episode of Zero to 60. Now this episode starts from the kitchen. I nearly said it starts from the fridge uh, because somebody has an E92 in pieces in the shed at the moment. That's me, I was trying to do a CIC upgrade, which has all gone wrong. However, I have just received from Lucas this morning the new map for the 8HP45. Now I just wanted to show you guys, I know some of you might find it interesting because I said in the last video on this car, you can run or you might be able to run an 8HP45 on a 8HP70 map. What I have here, I have the 8HP45 and the 8HP70 map loaded in Tuna Pro. Now, these are all of the things that are different in the map. There are some changes. Like, it's, it's an insane amount of differences. That's probably, did I even tell you? 1,327 differences in the maps. So, I mean, obviously that is all of the gear adaptations, the shift points, everything, but the maps are very different. Lucas has created this map or the base map for the petrol E90 8HP 45s this week. I think I'll be the first customer to run this base map. He's also sent through some new firmware. I'm gonna get the firmware loaded on the Turbo Lamic TCU and we'll go for a drive. I'll see you guys in the car shortly. So that is the TCU update. I know the GoPro hates these Windows screens. In transmission. So we've updated the software. And hopefully, once we do a power cycle, we should get rid of that transmission fault. Do -do -do. Okay, transmission fault gone. Right. I'll get the map loaded up and we'll go for a drive. Um, a couple of people gave me a few suggestions on what the full electronics fault was. Nissi Jarnett, the legend himself, he has suggested that there may be an issue with the connection on the JBE. I can't see the problem, so we'll see if that comes back in this test drive today. Uh, let me get Tuna Pro up and we'll get this new base map loaded, loaded on. That is Tuna Pro telling me it's connected to the Lamic. So we have it here, and I'm just gonna make sure that we open the correct file. Oh, it is 8HP45 bin, connect to the TCU. We're definitely connected. Things come to life, voltages are low. But let's upload the current bin. Okay, the shifter just turned off, so we need to change a shifter setting. And let me, let me change the camera. Hopefully that's a bit better. So the Lamex always seem to come with the shifter programs for an F series, which I don't have. We have an E series shifter. So CAM1 selector, CAM1 type. And you can see there the value is 32. That is for an F series. Let's just change it to 30. Hit enter. Save. Upload the bin. And then the shifter should come back to life. Yes. Right, we're good to go for a drive. Okay, everything's logging. Alrighty. I did notice there is a different algorithm for the oil temperature on the 8HP 45s. But aside from that, this all looks the same. Uh, if you're wondering why we get this tire pressure loss, the iDrive controller doesn't work and I can't reset the uh, tire pressures. So the car just thinks it's in a tire pressure issue. And there's something else wrong. Uh, we'll worry about that. All right, let's go for a drive. I didn't film going through that section because it's so sketchy and the car just goes sideways. This is how wet the grass is. And it didn't rain that much yesterday. It rained through the night though. But man, this, this wet weather we're getting in Southeast Queensland is mental. Ugh, everything's just filthy. All right, we can concentrate on driving now. So, initial thoughts on the base map. It did do a little bit of a aggressive shift engagement. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, the first one was more aggressive, but I have a feeling it does relearn like a standard transmission. Uh, the transmission is obviously cold. I noticed that the original map, the 8HP 70 map, showed 17 degrees, but when I put the 8HP 45 map, it showed 15 degrees on the temperature. It'd be interesting to see how it's calculating that or why it's different so much. I would really love to be able to turn off tire pressure loss. I hate seeing errors, but let's go. Actually, I'll put these lights
lights on. Is that better to see? No, can't really see on the dash. Let's see if it's gonna auto shift. Oh, like I bought one. So this is its first time shifting. It's done no ad adapting. I should probably just shut up and let you listen to the shifts. Oh, lovely downshifts. Okay, so this happened with the HP 70. The first drive, the, the box feels amazing, but then it got a bit weird after some adaptations. But we do have an issue with that 8HP70 box and I'm fairly confident that we just caused a bit of an excessive wear on the clutch pack with the issues with the oil pan. I am using an aftermarket oil pan on this car, but it's a plastic oil pan and it's the same one that seemed to work well on the 8HP70. Let me show you those shifts. That's wild. For a base map, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Love it. All right, we've got a car coming, so we'll do a bit more of an aggressive acceleration. Oh, how's the shifts? They're quite quick shifts. And just a reminder about these horrific, I think they're federal semi-slicks. Many dislikes, they're so noisy. Mind you, this car is poly bushed, which might be why they're so noisy. Give me that seventh gear. There's seventh. All right, we're coming up to a stoplight. I'm on the brakes. Can we feel the downshifts? All right, that was pretty damn good. All right, I'm gonna get some more heat into it and I'm gonna show you the shifting once it actually starts doing the automatic adaptations. But we gotta get some more heat in the transmission. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I just thought I'd show this. So you can see the engine is now at about 85 degrees Celsius. So the engine's still not warm enough to be thrashed and the transmission is at 44 degrees. So by the time the engine's warm enough to have a beating, so around the 100 degrees C, the transmission will be ready and over 50 as well. But just something I wanted to touch on, it is winter here today. Right now, my watch says it's 20 degrees outside. This car doesn't have an ambient temperature sensor at the moment. But even in these cold temps, the trans gets up to speed fast enough so that it's not a problem. Uh, and that's not having a thermostat in the trans cooler line. So the oil is getting pumped to the front of the car. Also, the location of this trans cooler is right at the front of the bumper so it's going to be it's going to be in a good location and yeah getting it hot before being able to use the trans is no problem the engine it's it basically gets to temp at about the same temp about the same time as the engine i hope that makes sense also it's just it's just driving pretty damn well give me a shift give me a shift go down shift god didn't expect that yeah the gearbox is doing what it should do. And hopefully when it gets to 50 degrees C, we'll start doing some adaptations. All right, so the oil temp is now at about 95 degrees C. So again, they're still really not hot enough to be thrashing an M54, and the trans is at 50. So that's kind of, you can you can beat on a transmission when the oil's at 50, it'll be fine, probably. Um, we'll just wait for this car to go, and then, We'll see if we can do some adaptations and see how the gearbox reacts to learning. See if it gets better or if it gets worse. All right, take up is OEM like. I mean that shift is incredible. Ah, uh, uh, you missed it. Sorry. I'll try and get. I'll try and get the adaptation screen. There it is. It's adapting. It's learning how to drive smoother. This is it, this is just how you train a turbo lamic transmission controller. It's adapting right now. Give me seventh. All right. Now, uh, actually, yeah, okay, two seconds. I'm trying to keep the GoPro out of the 
the sunlight glare. Is it going to go to eighth? We've got eighth gear. It doesn't display D. Ah, I've got to turn that setting on so that we get D8. That's all right. That's because it's a new map. So we'll see if it now, we're now decelerating. See if it adapts on decel. Okay, so it doesn't display deceleration adaptation. Actually, felt pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna go down a super quiet back street and we'll just do some accelerations and then decelerations. Basically, just let it go up and down the gearbox on its own. Okay. God, the sun is shining. This is so weird. Okay, from a stop. So these transmissions start in second. And we'll take up. It's adapting. It's adapting. And I'm going to slow down and come to a complete stop. Damn. Damn. <laughs> this drives better than the Flomax car. However, we've got to do some more adapting. We do have to do some more adapting. And the car... The car doesn't like stopping. So the hard brakes are when it does its error thing. The dash cluster is off. What is loose? Something is loose. When I brake hard. My God. All right, I need to work out what that is. Let's see if we can restart the car or if it's gonna be horrible. Put the window down and I'll pop the boot. Okay, the boot's popped. Then it gets power again. This is a weird issue. scary it's like it had lost fuel pressure so if I brake hard it loses power it's lost power what the fuck is going on the transmission's good though <laughs> all right we have radio we've got no dash cluster no screen but the engine seems to run okay so what I thought I would do is do a little wheel spins but you can't see the revs, but you'll be able to hear it. So have a listen. God, these eight speeds are good. That got up into fifth gear whilst wheel spinning in normal mode. It just shifts on its own. These tires are atrocious. Um, let's go sports mode, bugger it. Sports mode, program two. And if I touch a paddle, do the paddles still work? Paddles work. Okay, so now we're in manual mode. I'm gonna head home, but I kinda wanna get some interesting footage on the video. We have gotta work out why the dashboard turns off. Don't know what that was. Need to check what that was. Was that a rock? Or did part of the engine just fall out? <laughs> Okay, so the, the noise I just heard was actually a cat's eye that the, it was in the middle of the road, not stuck to the floor. One of those plastic reflector things. Um, the dashboard's just going crazy, so I'm gonna limp it home. The trans is doing everything that it should do. I'm in sports mode at the moment. But yeah, something's loose. There is an electrical circuit that is loose somewhere. Or a module's dying. I really hope nothing got wet in all the rain. That is an interesting fault. <laughs> oh man. indicators how fun are BMWs yeah, 
let's see if it'll let me manual shift. We're in first. That felt really quick. These eight ratios really make cars feel rapid. All right, I'm gonna end the video off here. The Turbo Lamic base map seems brilliant. It's gonna need some more driving. I don't know how many Ks we did then. I'd love to tell you, but the we did 25 kilometers. Really wanna do about 100, but I've gotta work out what this electrical issue is. Um, yeah, I just had a quick look around the JBE module and I cannot see anything wrong. I'm gonna leave the car in the sun, I think. Um, yeah, but the dash cluster turns off, the air conditioning doesn't work, and the iDrive screen doesn't work. But everything else seems to work. Engine runs fine, transmission works, the radio works. Turn the lights off. No. Weird fault. I'll let you know when I work it out. Cars are awesome. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you for watching.